Well, let's get more analysis now and speak to Caroline Gray, who is a lecturer in politics and Spanish at Aston University in the United Kingdom. Thank you so much for speaking to us. Uh, you've written extensively about nationalist movements in Spain, notably the Basques and the Catalans. Uh, could you help us understand what their role has been and what's been the role of these small nationalist parties in bringing about this new election? Well, in Spain, whenever there have been minority governments, which has frequently been the case, those minority governments have needed the support of regionally based parliament, regionally based parties in the Spanish parliament to approve legislation. And that has happened a lot in Spain. That's why we've seen a lot of minority governments in Spain. And this time round, Pedro Sanchez, again, needed the support of regionally based parties in order to be able to approve legislation. But with the Catalan conflict going on, that has become much more difficult because in the past, whereas Catalan nationalist parties would negotiate with central governments to, to, to give their support in the Spanish parliament. This time around, they've ceased doing that because they, they made very clear, the Catalan pro-independence parties made very clear that they would only support the budget if um, Sanchez was willing to negotiate on self-determination for Catalonia. And Sanchez ultimately said that that was not going to be feasible um, because the Socialist Party is very against self-determination for Catalonia, which goes against the Spanish constitution. And therefore, the Catalan pro-independence parties weren't willing to support um, Sanchez. So he needed their support in order to get the budget through because the, the Socialists only have 84 seats out of the 350 seats in the Spanish parliament. They needed the support of the far-left party Podemos, who gave their support, but also of lots of regionally based parties. And without that, they couldn't approve the budget. And really, they can't govern, which is why more elections are now being called. Yeah, and it looks like, uh, yeah. just looking at the polls, I mean, no single party would win enough votes to govern on their own. Uh, so there's going to have to be uh, some coalitions built after the elections. Any thoughts as to what the uh, sort of composition of the next coalition government in Spain might be? Or might we simply just go back to uh, what we had before? It's, um, it's difficult to see, to be honest, as, because it looks like it will be a very fragmented parliament, which means, as, that, as you indicate, that the winning party is not necessarily the party that will end up governing. It's who can actually form a government. The polls indicate at the moment that the three white, right-wing parties, which are the PP, the mainstream Conservative Party, plus Vox, a new far-right party, plus Ciudadanos, the Citizens Party, which, which has, has moved further and further to the right, the polls indicate that between the them, the three of them may have just an absolute majority of seats. And so they may form a government which is very similar to what they've done in the Andalusia, the southern region of Spain, which held regional elections last year. But, you know, if they do for, win an absolute majority of seats between them, they are likely, according to the polls, to only just have an absolute majority of seats. So it wouldn't necessarily be a strong government. Add in on top of that, that there would be a lot of fighting between these three parties, because ultimately the three of them are all seeking to, to be the lead party on the right in Spain. And so if you add in all those factors, it's a very complex picture. And as I say, it may be that they don't, even between the three of them, that they don't quite manage to get that absolute majority. And then we're back to a scenario where nobody, no combination of parties really manages to form a government. And that's what we saw in 2015, 2016. It's why Spain has had such problems forming any strong government in the past few years. OK, well, thank you very much indeed. Caroline Gray at Aston University in the United Kingdom. Thank you very much indeed.